that's a big one. It's a big box. I'm really looking forward to tearing into this one. It was, uh, hey, what's up, Garden Friends? It's Jeff here. As a video, hope you're doing well. I'm great. What could be wrong? Sitting outside with some boxes from Plantolites. One of, if not my favorite places to order plants online. They have an amazing selection. They put out their fall catalog just a week or two ago. And now I hear I am with more plants. All things I'm excited about, particularly, I was about to say what I have in this one. I don't know for sure what's in either one of these. I figured I'd bring y'all along, cut them open, have a look at them and to talk about them. And full disclosure, oops, knocked something over. Don't like when this kind of thing happens, but here we are. When you get a plant in the mail, you always want to open them up right away. I think there's even like a sign on here that says like, help me, it's dark or something. I don't know. I'm not gonna look around the packages because you might see my address. I have them situated just right. So I won't have to bore that out and I didn't have to tape it over. Oh yeah, here it is. Life plants help, let us out. We need air, light, water, TLC, you get it. Um, these showed up last night and it is now 5 p.m. the next day. They showed up at night, so I wasn't rushing to open them up, so I wanted to do it on camera. And then this morning had a sewer blowout in the house, so I was dealing with that. You can't just ignore the smell of sewage flying out of your basement. I don't know what happened. It was something in a sewer line somewhere like burped. And then there was just like, it was more like pipe bile than anything. We don't need to go into all that. It was really gross, uh, but it could have been much worse. It was on the concrete, didn't get on any of the walls or any carpeting that was in the basement. So uh, I consider it to be a life and learning experience. And uh, right now I'm just using that to explain to y'all that these have been in the box a day longer than they really should have. Their shipping was very prompt. I don't think them sitting in the package for an additional, we'll say 19 hours, that that is enough to really do any damage, but that I should let y'all know. Sorry, it's not a more pleasant story, which could be something more fun and exciting, but no, it was the sewer under the house burped. There's that packaging. One of the other reasons, not just the amazing selection of plants, the way they package them, it's just so good. I mean, look at that. It's, they're in a fortress. All my papers out. This is always a planting guide and an invoice and something else that I'll look at later. I don't want to accidentally show my address again. So I'm just going to keep that put away. How is this? Okay. Got the air packs in there. That's why it was wedged in more tightly. Than I figured it would be. This is, is this just one plant? I thought there were going to be two in here. It looks like this is just one. Well, that's exciting. Oh, okay. Nice and big too. Okay. All right. Get that out of the way. You see what's in here? Okay. I know it's not much to look at right now. None of them will be. They were just shipped. This is a Hedicium. So Hedicium's are one of my favorite things to order from them. One, because they're pretty much the only place that sells them. Hedicium's being the butterfly ginger, so it's this right here. Butterfly ginger, awesome plant. It's this time of year, it's my favorite plant in the garden. That is the Hedicium flaming torch. Uh, they sell them in nice big sizes. I should take it out before I talk about it much more, shouldn't I? Okay, well, here's the thing. I, spoiler alert, there's, I think, two or three more Hedicium's in this box too. Maybe I should just get them all opened up before I start going over the specifics of the different ones that I've ordered, but I will just highlight right now what a nice big plant this is. You can feel the rhizome pushing on the sides of the container. That's a plant that is ready to get in the ground and do some growing. It's not some little stubby thing where I'm gonna have to grow it out for years before I see anything next year. That should be a great big glorious plant. I mean, not like that big and glorious, but you get what I'm saying. So that means there should be, I believe, two more Hedicium's in here. And then there are a couple more really cool looking other plants in here. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Things are looking good already. Hedicium's. And I have a problem. I have so many of the butterfly gingers and now I'm adding more. And I'll keep adding more because they're awesome plants. Plant Delights is a great source for Hedicium's. These are, well, I was going to say they're all coccinniums, but they're not. One of them is a europhyllum. Let's start with 
this one right here. This is the apple cord. I don't really know why I brought it closer to the camera. There's not a ton to see. All I can really tell you is that the pots are nice and full on these. The rhizomes that are in here are super strong and ready to take off. The apple cord is a 7B to 10B. It goes about 72 inches tall. They have one foot tall flower heads on them, which have a very nice deep orange flower on them with a red throat. They bloom midsummer and again in early fall. I don't know about fragrance with this one. I've grown the apple cord many, many, many years ago. Don't recall fragrance from when I grew it back then either. So uh, y'all let me know if you can remember. The coccineums, in my experience, have been the most cold hardy for my zone six, now zone seven garden. Flaming torch back there in the background. One of my all time favorites, the Fiesta, Polani, Elizabeth, uh, Slim's Orange. There are tons. I, could, I have grown so many hadikiums. Flaming Torch has been my go-to for the one that I always end up keeping around. The Apple Court, beautiful flower on it. It's a more saturated orange flower than what you get or what I've ever noticed on my Flaming Torch hadikium that's in the background over there. That's one of the reasons I got it was just maybe a more vibrant pop of color. That's pretty much it. It's just a really tall, beautiful hadikium. The next one is... Uh, different and i don't know maybe i shouldn't even have gotten this one we'll talk about why you may notice that this one does look a little bit different than the other two that are over here mainly that there's a reddish to pinkish hint of color at the base of the stem this is a europhyllum so it's a hidicium europhyllum the other two are coccineums europhyllums aren't typically as cold hardy in my experience that's why i'm like eh, maybe i shouldn't have gotten it but the description of it was good, and I really like the flowers on it. So this one right here is called Prayer Flags. It's a 7B to 10B, 84 inches tall. They have that beautiful red base stem on them. They have a fragrant flower from mid-August and on. Creamy white flowers with a soft yellow center. The best way to describe that. The Europhyllums, they hold their flowers in tighter to that cone-like flower bract that they put up. And it just looks really cool. And I just thought structurally this would be a neat plant to have around and to try just because it has a neat shape to it. That was pretty much all that went into it. And fragrance, always nice. There are lots of other options for fragrance. The Coronarium, great one. The Gardnerianum or Gardnerium, <laughs> great one for fragrance. Europhyllum as well has a sweet honeysuckle-like fragrance to it. And then the last one, this is a really great Hedicium, really fantastic. You can even tell why I like this just from looking at this pot. This pot is bulging. You can see the rhizome up top as I spill dirt onto myself over here. Really, it's just a vigorous Hedicium. This is the Daniel Weeks. This has a lot going for it. So the Daniel Weeks, again, 7B to 10B, only goes 50 inches tall. I like that about it. A lot of Hedicium's, other than like the Slim's Orange, tend to be really big. <laughs> They're very large plants. This one, they say, is the first one to establish as a large clump. By they, I'm talking about Plant Delight's website. They have great descriptions. I have little post-its over here. So everything I'm telling you, the majority of it, other than when I say from my experience, is from their website. So 50 inches tall, it's about four feet tall with a one foot tall stalk of flower stalk on top of it from July to early August is when they start to flower and then they'll keep doing that until frost. So that's partially because they're a vigorous, fast to clump and fast to establish hedicium, meaning that a lot of the others that you'll plant, you get a few more stalks out of them every single year and then they flower and it's great and then it's over. The flaming torch that's in the background over there, love it, but the flowers aren't all that long lasting until it becomes a large established clump and then it starts putting up new growth even as it's putting up flower stalks. So you have a succession of flowers. You get that with the Daniel Weeks. They say that this one for them is the first to establish itself as a large clump, which is fantastic. Like it's one of the reasons that I wanted to get it. They have a creamy peach kind of flower on them with an orange throat. And the flowers on them tend to be more kind of Full, I guess is how you would want to describe that. That's one's orange. Flaming Torch, it's over there, the Fiesta. A lot of the coccineums, the flowers come up off of a very tall stalk and they're sometimes spread pretty far apart. 
Whereas on the Daniel Weeks, they just have more of a plush look to them because they hold their flowers a little bit closer together because it's a smaller stock, so they're just naturally closer together, which makes them look more full. They say that they have reports of these being hardy to zone 6, down to minus 7 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty cool. I and mean, I can tell you from my experience, a lot of coccinium's, hedicium coccinium's, are hardy into zone 6. You just need to mulch them very heavily. But I can't think of any coccinium ever, actually, that I planted not coming back for me unless we've had a really, really, really bad winter, which is why, <laughs> why some of these I have grown before because there was an occasion where we had a bad winter that knocked out a bunch of mine. Oh, and they're saying that the Daniel Weeks is probably a hybrid of Hedicium flavicens and the Gardnerium, which is good because that means that there should be a heavy fragrance. Oh, it even says on their website, says that they have a nice heavy fragrance in the evening. I don't remember that from when I grew Daniel, but that was an awfully long time ago. So back in the day, this garden used to get a lot of sunlight, and this berm that's back here used to be crepe myrtles, Tuscaroo crepe myrtles, and on each end I had the Daniel Weeks, and I loved them. They didn't come up super tall like the flaming torches did. They just, they fit into the garden space a little bit better. I have narrow garden beds, so as much as I love that flaming torch that's over there, having something that's going to save more on the smaller side for a Hedicium is the main reason that I want them and the fragrance. Anytime you can throw fragrance into the mix, I'm on board. I love having lots and lots and lots of nice smells out here in the garden. So those are the gingers. You know, I love my gingers. I'll always be getting more and playing around with them, experimenting with them, popping them into different places and dividing them up as time goes on. And <laughs> the last two, I just realized I've been rattling the tripod and the camera around, I'm sorry. Hopefully that wasn't too annoying. The last two that were the ones that were wrapped up in paper, these are ones that I am so excited about. Look at that. There's another one, I'll get the other one. There we go, there's two of them. You might actually wanna be able to see them, bring you down so you can have a nice look at them. Aren't those beautiful? These are agave, they're Desmatianas. The type is Galactic Traveler, also called Blue Moon. A very, I don't know how to put this, um, internet popular agave, is that how you would say it? I made sure to play with my camera settings as much as possible. I don't know what your screen settings are for what you're going to see, but from what I'm looking at, this is pretty true to what I'm seeing. They might be just a hint that more silvery blue in person than what I'm seeing on my screen right now. Look at how big and full these guys are. These are really nice sized plants. So the Desmontianas, they're more of a tropical agave. These are going to need to be treated as house plants here. Unless you're, I want to say probably 9B and up, maybe 9A, they need to be brought inside during the winter. The main thing is that they just, they don't experience frost or freezing, right? Maybe a very light and very brief frost, but I don't even know about that because they're variegated. Anytime you have the variegation, those yellow margins, they're not going to be quite as cold tolerant. These unchlorophylled areas tend to suffer the most, the quickest, I should say, when you have a cold spell. They make good house plants though, so that's why I got them, because they can go inside. They can be very drought tolerant. If you have them in a well-drained soil, then you can water them to your heart's desire. As long as they're not sitting in that water, they'll do fine. So that's, that's just versatile. That's why I love agaves. They're very versatile plants. The Desmatianas, they don't typically have spines on them. You could, I guess you could maybe call these spines, but I would call that spineless. It's not like gonna do any damage. You can feel it. Maybe if your skin's really soft, that might do something to you. But for the most part, it's pretty harmless. You see, like there's some ridges in there, like they have fake spines, but it's not something that's gonna hurt you, which makes them another great candidate for a plant that I would be moving around. Some agaves, I'm gonna bring over my lunky over here, my potato. Beautiful agave, also from Plant Delights. Got this one last year. I just love the variegation on this one. It's a very mild variegation where you just have some green, some silver, and some blue in there. This one, it, it, you touch those spines, you're gonna bleed. It'll get you. So it's one that I have to move around with caution. That's why I typically always try and pop my agaves up into containers that are <laughs> much larger in diameter than the actual plant. Lunky's just done some growing. So now it's sticking out and it's hard to find a spot where you can safely grab the container, which is a, that's a good thing. You want your plants to grow, but it's also, you know, dangerous. Don't have to worry about that with the Desmontianas. So 
This one right here, the reason it's so popular is because of the variegation. Look at that variegation. You have that nice lemony yellow margin on the outside with a silvery blue on the inside. I believe they describe it. I wrote it down what they said. Their description, which is going to be much better than mine, but here's what they say. Spineless rubbery leaves with glistening silver blue centers highlighted with a lemon yellow margin. Yeah, I'd say that's about right. And I don't know how it's going to show on camera, but they do have a glisten. There's a shine almost that you can only see when you move them around. Or I'm only seeing when I move them around. But the color combo in here, I think it's just, it's beautiful. And these are going to get more vibrant too, right? These have been grown in a, I don't want to call it a shade house, but they grow everything undercover, right? That's the, how you do it. When you're growing things in mass, you don't want them exposed directly to the sun. That just makes upkeep a lot more difficult. So when I transition these to full, or maybe part sun to full sun, they should become even more vibrant. They're a more vigorous agave too. These max out at about 36 inches tall. And they have a nice, more of an upright shape to them. So with agaves, you tend to have squat and fat, like the ovatifoliums or a lot of other agaves, or ones that come up just a little bit higher and then have that weepy appearance to them. So these will come up taller and then the, <laughs> then the ends of the leaves will kind of arch down and sort of do like this kind of thing. It's really cool looking. It does also give me like yucca color guard vibes, but more refined and elegant, I suppose is how I'd put that. It's just a fun plant. There's some really great variegated agaves out there. There's one, I think it's called Joan Hook or Joe Hook, maybe. I can't remember. I'll put up here on the screen. That has some amazing variegation on it. Very colorful and awesome plant that's going to be on my list for the next time I order from Plant Delights because it's just such a beautiful plant. And again, a more friendly agave to have around. You move them outside when you don't have to worry about frost anymore and you move them back inside when you do have to worry about frost. In the wintertime, I don't water my agaves very much when they're indoors, outside, water them to my heart's desire, and just making sure that they're not ever sitting in water. Really easy to care for. If you're into variegated agaves, plant delights, that's your source. They have the most I've ever seen anybody sell when it comes to different types of agaves, period, let alone variegated agaves. And actually the same thing with hedikiums. They tend to rotate their supply of which ones they're offering, but at times, they have a very good selection of the butterfly gingers that are back there. And hostas, hellebores, they just have a very wide selection of plants in general. Their facilities are very, very heavily focused on education and on conservation. They sell a good amount of plants that are endangered in the wild, which I love because it raises awareness for issues that are going on with plants. And it helps to combat poaching, right? Taking plants from the wild when we need to be leaving them alone and just raise awareness and education about what's going on with certain areas and certain plants and helping to keep those plants in circulation in people's gardens so that should they become extinct in their natural environment, we've got some backup genes for things. I don't know why I'm pointing to this. This is not, you don't, there's, there aren't really variegated agaves in the wild. That's not really a thing. Like Cypripediums, they have a great selection of Cypripedium orchids and they are more pricey, but it's because they grow them out properly and they're not poached from the wild. A lot of the times you order Cypripediums online, if you're just getting like the pubicins of one of the ones that is native, that's probably been dug up. Not necessarily, but something to look into. Yeah, I don't have to worry that with Plant Delights. That and their plant descriptions are just entertaining. They're a fun place to shop. Very fun place to shop. And okay, that's gonna do it. Y'all have seen the plants. This is part one of probably two or three, because I have a shade garden I'm working on behind me and I'm going to be placing more orders from them to try and get some fun, unique plants that don't ever, or I should say, often see at other nurseries or online. Another great thing about Plant Delights is a lot of plants hit the market. They're one of the first places to start them out or have them or potentially with a good amount of plants, the only place to sell them, period. Okay, yeah, comment down below. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's going absolutely beautifully for you. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I loved soft variegation and the contrast. I should have said all this when I was talking about it before. I like that the stripe that you get with that yellow margin is distinct, but also complementary. Does that make sense? It doesn't contrast too strongly. Sometimes it's just a really intense yellow against green. And that's just, I don't know, it doesn't really do it for me. But this, it's very soft. You get like a lemon lime vibe with this. I guess the galactic part is because they do have a sheen to them, which you really, like I said, only notice when you move them around. But I guess when you have plants, you might be walking around them. So it might become noticeable if that were the case. And it's 
kind of blue. It should get more blue as they get more sun. We've been through all that. Comment down below some of your favorite plants that you're dealing with right now. Do you have some favorite agaves that you like to grow? Your experience with the hideikiums? Let us know. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. Bye.